Good evening, friends. This side, Rahul Mangan here is a Group Chief Executive Officer, Treasury Consulting, and also a venture capitalist. Standing today on 24th September 2019, practically 8:30 p.m. in the in the evening, we are going to be shooting a pretty important topic about the XVA desk. As you very well understand that Singapore, Hong Kong are the leading financial centers of the globe. Though both are having their operational issues, there is no doubt about that. And we also understand that March, sorry, is October 2023. The banks have to comply with the Basel III norms. Recently, the Basel III Trial Survey, basically once in every three years, this survey uh, came up with a very I would say stark revelations about Singapore and Hong Kong, and there is also uh, a report, uh, basically, uh, basically a quarterly bulletin by BIS Bank for International Settlement, which is giving a very stark revelations about the interbank credit. I don't know how many people know about interbank credit, but interbank credit is a pretty important term, and except Basel BIS, I don't think anybody dare to cover this. But we're going to have this video soon in that regards. There is also news that Hong Kong, irrespective of the whatever happening there, I'm not saying that there is nothing, nothing wrong which is happening, irrespective of what is happening here, you know, on a on a basically social front, Hong Kong will lead the way as far as the implementation of the fundamental review of the trading book is concerned. And fundamental review of the trading book, although having many, you know, I would say difference of opinions with the Basel three. And one difference of opinion is the competition of XBA. So we have one term, I don't know how well you verse with FRTB, but we have one term which is known as FRTB XVA. Now FRTB XVA, you know, uh, sorry, FRTB CBA, CVA, credit valuation adjustment. FRTB CVA is having little interpretation issue with the Basel 3 CBA. And the story is turning twist, very, very twisty when FRTB CVA credit valuation adjustment is having an interpretation issue with the Basel 3 CVA and the way banks wanted to implement their CVA is a different. Now whose, whose version will actually come in the picture we don't know. We do not know. But we know one thing that without quoting the name of the banks that international banks the big boys they have started firing people. And they have started firing people and now they are slowly moving towards the box. And this is the reality. Now all the big boys which are sitting at the top, they have started moving the bots. Today there is a news which came and we're going to have a separate video in that regards. This is my version of uh, XVA desk. So our top bank like Goldman, JP, City, they might have their own versions. This is my version. So once Treasury Consulting, which is filing for a bank license and would surely have an interbank task in place. Now we won't be a bank who will be completely dependent upon the EY, KPMG, PWC and Deloitte. Rather, we would be a bank wherein they would be dependent upon us. So we won't be DBS or any other bank, those who would be paying millions of dollars every year to these big fours, basically, uh, you know, of, of, for the sake of professional fees. Rather, we have our own models. So this is an XVA model of Treasury Consulting Bank and once we will get the banking license, how our XVA model would we look like. I take an indemnification that big boys like Goldman, JP, Chase, City and all, they might have a difference of opinion with my model and they should be because the way they operate, we don't. And the way we want to be operating, they don't. That's pretty clear point. In any XVA decks, the foremost principle or the basic backbone is how many instruments you are supporting. Just like an Apple iPhone. How many apps you support? Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Snapchat and whatnot. They support almost every app. Now the recent iOS 13, they had, I think I am a big fan of Apple and iOS 13 came up with a pretty good, uh, I would say, uh, features to be honest. The recent iOS 13 came up with a pretty good feature so they are offering you more than what they are offering in iOS 12 and kudos goes to, kudos goes to Apple for that. Similarly in my XVA desk the basic premise is how many instruments you are offering. 
So basically complete interbank has to offer. Well, the size of the board is relatively small. So we cannot write all, but we have wrought a lot of them, which includes forward contracts, deliverable, plain vanilla option, range forwards, seagull, straddle, synthetic forward, dollarization swap, reverse dollarization swap, window forwards, time forwards. I don't know how many people here, those who are watching this video actually know how time forward works, to be honest. Barrier options, Kiko, knock in, knock out, look back options, average options, time options, overnight index swaps, basis swaps, quanto swap, reverse quanto, ratchet swap. I don't know whether the so-called degrees like certified financial analyst and Faltu risk management, you know, FRM. They even teach you that the difference between the quanto and the reverse quanto swap. Forget the difference between quanto and the ratchet swap. It is said that one in 100 traders of the globe in IRS know how to price quanto. And I think I'm the luckiest one. But our XV desk, since the size of the board is small, but it would have lots of instrument that I show you. And please be rest assured, a very detailed presentation in that regards is round the corner. So in October, we are submitting to Bank uh, to Monetary Authority of Singapore and the similar kind of presentation we are shooting to, you know, the HKMA and also to the Swiss authorities, to be honest. And it's a detailed banking presentation and Sukoya and SoftBank will play no role in that regards. No role. It's a pure full fledged bank. It's on the place. So you have Richard Swap, Accretion Swap, Non Deliverable Swap, Florets, Caplets, Range Collars, Non Deliverable Forwards, Non Deliverable IRS, Implied Wall Structures. Implied Wall Structures is now, I would say, second generation. The first generation is the Imputed Wall Structures. I started my career in 2007 when the world was talking about basically historical volatility. Then slowly the world moved to realized volatility, which is nothing but historical plus minus outliers. Then we moved to implied volatility, which is realized plus minus opinion. So if you take an option pricing basically from 10 banks, then these 10 banks would have different pricing and the rational they have is the implied volatility. And that's quite logical, right? while the world has moved from implied to imputed volatility and we should thank you to the big boys like especially goldman here in that regards who is leading that as a torch bearer when we are moving from implied to imputed now don't ask me the difference between imputed and implied implied it is a hell lot they are you would be surprised to know though we are not discussing that everything we cannot discuss but there are four definitions of imputed volatility Four, you know, implied volatility having one definition, historical one definition, realized one definition, while imputed volatility having four definitions. But these so-called degrees, which people take by paying thousands and thousands of dollars, they even don't teach I of implied, imputed. And I'm sure maybe in the next 20 years also, they have no plan to teach you that. So we would be covering implied wall structures. And my favorite, credit derivatives and forward rate agreements. I again repeat, this box which I have made, this is in the interest of space. Because I need to cover this as well. Else, I would be taking all instruments still here. You know, I love foreign exchange. It's something which makes you more wonderful, to be honest. So we would be covering almost everything from a deliverable side to the non-deliverable side. Our, my version of XV is that all these instruments will divide into eight asset classes. Strategically speaking, Reuters and Bloomberg, the two leading financial data reference provider, they are dividing the world into eight asset classes, which includes the foreign exchange, money market, interest rate swaps, which is IRS. And please, please do not forget that in the recent BIS trial survey, published September 2019, they have computed that the IRS is the largest market we have in the globe. Whereby if we assume that we work for 272 days, which is a pretty, which is I think very pessimist opinion because we works more than that actually. 
Even if we work 272 day, the IRS size worldwide per year is 1768 trillion. Yes, 1768 trillion, which is roughly 1.77 tera trillion. That's a huge amount, 1.77 tera trillion. So for a minute, we assume that the GDP per year of US is roughly 20 trillion, which is not definitely, which is closer to 16 and 17. Even if it would be more than 80, 90 times of that, at least 80 times of that GDP is the IRS per year. That's what the scope is. So how can we have all these instruments mentioned there? So XVA desk is not pretty easy. It's pretty, I would say it is more complex than designing an iPhone. To be honest because iPhone features are I'm not saying it is limited I not wanted to demean Apple but actually iPhone is having a basically yes at, at a point of time your thought process ends up in designing but actually your thought process keeps moving you don't know actually then you have petroleum products which includes specifically oil derivatives and you have coal and energy you have structured derivative and you have emission I'll assure you that the fixed income platform which we are designing, which is www.fixedincome.global, which is up and running, four multi-billion desks around the corner. And soon, all these asset classes would be available on a very live basis. That's my assurance. So our XV desk would have the instruments, then we will divide into eight asset classes. Now here, we are going to be dividing dynamically, not manually. Because treasury consulting don't believe manual effort. We're going to be dividing this dynamically. And dynamically, we are going to be using tagging. I don't know how many people here know about FIX protocol, which is financial information exchange. FIX protocol is when two systems, could be laptop with laptop, laptop to desktop, or any two system. Basically, two systems of financial data reference providers, when they connect with each other, they connect using FIX. While FIX is having a lot of problems, there is no doubt about that. And like we shoot it our video that we're going to have fix this, we need to fix a lot of problem in the fix. I hope you understood. We need to fix a lot of problem in the fix. Now, one of the biggest problem in the fix is the tagging issue. That is really absent. While the world is moving too much technological, which is artificial intelligence, virtual reality, internet of thing, augmented reality, you know, and you know, artificial, you know, uh, basically blockchain, Bitcoin, and whatnot. You know, while one side the technologically is advancing at a pretty faster pace, while when it comes to the technology in the foreign exchange systems, still Mulex, Calypso, and all these companies they are running traditionally. It's basically legacy-based product which are running because nobody challenging them. But I challenge Mulex in case they can prove that their tagging works in an appropriate way. They might not even know that how tagging works. That's how. This is the intelligent level of the intelligence level of the murex actually. So we have this. We're going to create tagging here. That tagging would link with that, and that is dynamically. That is a dynamic. Then we're going to be dividing. I'm not going to be discussing FX engine and the tech engine. We're going to hold for another five watt minutes. We this tagging will divide all the entries into two parts. So one is the deliverable tagging and one is the non-deliverable tagging. So every example time forward, I'm not explaining what is time forward. So time forward can be deliverable, can be non-deliverable. Now that deliverable tagging would be say TF1. Once the trader book time forward deliverable, it would automatically go here. Now time forward what? It's a foreign exchange. So time forward will come here. So my trader will book time forward. It will come under foreign exchange via dynamic tagging. This is deliverable. It will come here. If he's going to be booking the interbank deal of the non-deliverable, it's going to be time forward, foreign exchange, and non-deliverable. Now similarly like barrier. Barrier is IRS. If it is going to be non-deliverable barrier, it's going to be come here. Else if it is going to be deliverable, it's going to be here. Well, many people even do not know that barrier could also be deliverable and the non-deliverable. That is. Similarly, we would have two engines. One engine would be FX engine and what engine would be Rectech engine. I thank you to Goldman and, and few another banks, those who came forward in the market 
and led the show as a leader and they moved from traditional legacy based treasury management system and created their own FX engine which in their parlance is known as the pricing engine. Now FX engine is an engine which is able to do everything as per your own request. It is much better version than we have Reuters and Bloomberg although although the link has to be via Reuters and Bloomberg. So FX engine is an independent platform of Goldman, JP and all these big boys. But having said that, it has to be linked with the Reuters and Bloomberg. So you cannot run away from this fact, you know, but this FX engine would be give you one important thing which Reuters and Bloomberg unfortunately not been able to give you perfectly. I'm not saying not been able to give you not been able to give you perfectly, which is implied and imputed walls. Today you go anywhere on Reuters and Bloomberg. You can try if you have any. Go to anywhere on Reuters and Bloomberg and just work hard to compute that what is implied, what is imputed wall. You will get no answer. Because Reuters himself do not have an answer. The same is the case with the Bloomberg. But Goldman cannot rely on the Reuters. JP Morgan Chase cannot rely on the Reuters. City cannot rely on the Reuters. Interbank market need imputed walls if you are dealing with Goldman and all. And that imputed wall will fed up into the FX engine. Similarly, we need Rectech engine. Now, Rectech engine means we need an engine which compute the regulatory uh, compliances just like RWA risk weighted asset, just like RWL risk weighted liabilities, just like the 24 into 7 immunization, gross immunization, net immunization, T lakh, T, uh, which is a total loss, uh, T lakh total loss, uh, total loss absorbing capital and multiple stuff. So this engine and this engine would work parallelly and has to. If they do not work parallelly, then it's a severe crisis for that bank, which would end up the wind up as well. Because the computation and, and, and according to my opinion, according to my vision of XV desk, this has to take a little lead. So, you know, uh, it's basically in races like uh, relays and all which are in Olympics and multiple sports uh, competitions which are happening. There's a term called heads up. So I will give you a heads up of uh, 10 meters, 20 meters, maybe five seconds and something like that. This has to give a, this has to get a heads up of 15 to 20 seconds depends than this. And that's pretty tough. That's pretty tough. And both this and this has to be dynamic. So XV is not easy. If you're thinking XV is easy, if you are thinking the so-called media, the so-called CFA and FRM and all these degrees, do not talking about that. It's not easy. And the future is XV. That's for sure. Being coming as a bank soon, we are serious about our XVADS because we do not want these big folks to come to us and explain. We don't need their opinions. We have our own opinions. So I repeat the first is this instruments followed by with the tacking and the fixed protocols. Then we have all eight asset classes. And remember, these asset classes can increase, cannot decrease. Then it is automatic deliverable and non-deliverable two engines work parallelly. However, I'm in an opinion that Rectech engine would have a 15, 20 second and that depends on an asset class wise heads up. Then you have the FX engine. Then you have the seven, sorry, eight XVAs, which includes credit valuation adjustment, debit valuation adjustment, margin valuation adjustment, funding valuation adjustment, capital valuation adjustment, Cold walk, collateralized valuation adjustment, oblique ORS, overnight index swaps, liquidity valuation adjustment, and then additional valuation adjustments. These would be computed automatically, and the computation will go in the PNL. While this all setup would link with an accounting engine. What is that accounting engine? It will automatically compute the accounting as per IFRS 9. Because CVA, DVA will go in the PNL. Now, different eight have their different accounting competition although having said that IFRS still having an interpretation issue with multiple uh, organizations and forums including us as far as the accounting of XVA is concerned. 
and unfortunately even the best and best people are little reluctant talking about how the accounting would actually works to be honest the final the complete setup would have a team which includes people like me fx traders quants and everybody and once everything happen it will go to a reporting engine which is go to subtech supervisory technology we going to have a separate video in that regards now this is my version which is part 1 of xva wherein we have an instrument asset classes dynamic coding two engines eight xvas and a team who would be monitoring that i will again repeat that different banks of the globe would have their own different versions but this is my version the version of treasury consulting bank with this we thank you very much i hope you know our mobile number which is plus 91 Nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. You know our fixed income platform www dot fixed income dot global. www dot fixed income dot global. And please be note that now we have our TikTok channel as well. And I assure you, before end of October, we are heading as a thousand video YouTube channel. One thousand video YouTube channel. And after Khan. we would be the second youtube channel in the globe who would cross 1000 marks we thank you very much for your love affection and your subscription you are doing in in our youtube channel we assure you we continue to shoot lot of different videos we never worry about the feedback of you idiots we don't worry about what cfa frm and all these forums thinks about us because we know one thing that if they don't speak somebody has to and that's my responsibility like steve said in 1976 I don't bother about HP. If HP is not looking personal computing as a future, I don't bother. And end result, he end up making the most valuable company of the globe, which today the world knows Apple. While HP never thought about it, and Apple and HP always regretted that why we not thought about it. If today no one is thinking XVA, that's not my problem. With this, we thank you very much. Have a great time. More videos around the corner. Talk soon.